Hello, and welcome to the Toledo According To podcast. I'm Riley Runnels, assignment editor of the Toledo City Paper, and I will be interviewing some of Toledo's most influential and impactful residents as they walk us through what Toledo means to them. Every episode will feature a new guest talking about their favorite Toledo attractions, businesses, restaurants, and experiences, with the hope of our audience learning more about the guest and finding more gems of Toledo. All right, I am here with Steve Miller. Hi, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks. Um, so first, tell our listeners a little bit about yourself, you know, how long you've been in Toledo, your occupation, mm-hmm. how you got here. Well, um, I've been in Toledo about 16 years now. I got moved down here actually from Grand Rapids, Michigan to open the Huntington Center, which back in the day was the Lucas County Arena before we had our naming rights. And right. uh, I was on the opening team of the uh, arena and I've been here ever since. And we've since now went through a huge renovation of the convention center. and so. I'm, I'm the general manager and in charge of both the Huntington Center and the Glass City Center. Yeah, so talk a little bit about your responsibilities within your position. Well, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm in charge of the day-to-day operations. We have, okay. you know, a finance department, marketing, sales, um, operations, and so I oversee all of the various departments, but we have staff members that kind of run those departments. Mm-hmm. And I also book the arena uh, for all the shows that come in for the events. Uh, we have a sales team that books the convention center. Um, our operations team is great doing all the changeovers for the events you know we, we, people always talk about having dirt in the arena and then we flip over and have hockey the, you know in a couple of days afterwards so those guys kind of handle all those type of things um, I work for ASM Global which mm-hmm. is a private management company we're one of the largest in the world actually based in Los Angeles and uh, we've had a contract with Lucas County to operate these facilities since uh, 2008 Awesome. That's awesome. I mean, working downtown already, you're around so many great Toledo gems, but also, I mean, I have to think being a part of the Huntington Center and the Glass City Center, you go to a lot of really cool events and attend a lot of fun things too. So I'm curious to hear some of your favorites, but I want to start off with a bit of a tough question. (laughs) So what is the place in Toledo that you are the most proud of? Uh, well, I, I guess I'd have to say it's the Huntington Center because I, because, I, because I was able to come down and actually build this from scratch. You know, I was one of the team members that helped design this building, and I think we've we've got a uh, we've got a gem here just in the Huntington Center. I think not only locally but nationally. Yeah, we punch above our weight. We get a lot of great shows that come into the market uh, that probably shouldn't be playing Toledo, and uh, I think it's a testament to the to the building, and it's a testament to the the surrounding community that actually buys tickets because Definitely. you know when promoters book events they want to make money and right. if you don't sell tickets you don't make any money <laughs> exactly and uh, the, the, I, I think that the Toledo market is is, is a hidden gem in our in our industry that uh, we get a lot of great events because we actually buy tickets and attend for sure for sure yeah I have honestly been shocked you know I grew up in Toledo so watching some of these bigger shows come here and seeing all of the attendance and people flocking to the city to go to these events it's so special so mm-hmm. So I love what you're doing with the Huntington Center and with Glass City Center. It's incredible. Um, but I'm curious, separate from the event space, what is the best meal that you've ever had in Toledo and where was it from? You know, it's, it's funny. I live in Sylvania. So um, we do, my wife and I do patronize a lot of the Sylvania restaurants. We do go to a lot of restaurants, but my favorite place, honestly, was, was Element. Yeah. 112, which unfortunately is no longer. They, yeah. They've got into a different business and I think they're doing so well in their other business that that kind of just went away for sure that that was an amazing experience we started I'll be honest with you, we started off there and we didn't have the greatest experience from a food perspective but once we brought that to their attention they took care of it and from that moment forward it was spectacular yeah absolutely I still think about their burgers sometimes mm-hmm. it was incredible um, tell me about your favorite annual event in the city uh, you know that's a that's a good one um, I there's there's a couple of wild game. I'm a hunter. Uh, there's mm-hmm. a, there's a couple of wild game dinners. One at the Toledo Club and one at Inverness that takes place every year that I'm able to attend. But probably the the biggest charity event that I that I enjoy because there's so many great charities in Toledo is Barefoot on the Beach. Yeah, of out, course. Out on Mommy Bay. Um, it's su- such a cool uh, atmosphere out there. They they put the big campfires out there. You got the view of the water. Um, of course, they always have to deal with the rain. It seems like for that event, it seems like right. it follows them. But uh, <laughs> even even that being said, it's such a great spot. It's it's a, it's a great event, and it's it's for a great charity and a great cause. Definitely, and it's also a great way to connect with other businesses and other community members. I always find that event to be such a great, great one in the city. So tell me too your favorite Huntington Center or Glass City Center events, either something that happens regularly or just something you've attended that was a really fun experience for you. 
Uh, you know, Huntington Center wise, I think it's it was probably the opening of the facility. I mean, I, I don't tell a lot of people this, but um, this is a public thing, I guess we're talking about, but um, Taylor Swift was supposed to be the opener of the Huntington Center. Oh, wow. And it was confirmed. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, she blew up before it got to that point. Instead of selling 8,000 tickets, she was selling 20,000. And right. the promoter called me and said, Steve, we've we have to pull the date. And I said, wait a second, it's the opening of the building. Right. And he's like, well, I'm sorry, but you know, this is about money. And, and wow. she's, and I, and I don't blame him because that's what it is. It is about money. I mean, that's what artists do is that's their living. Yeah. And uh, so that didn't happen. So instead we had Jeff Dunham, who's been here now. He's mm -hmm. coming up for his fifth time here in April and we love it. He was, it was, it was an awesome sold out event and it worked out very well, but it was, it's kind of a funny story. Uh, it wasn't funny at the time, but right. I can tell the story because Taylor Swift would probably never play the Huntington Center ever in her, her lifetime now right. because she's playing 75,000 seat stadiums. Yeah, I was going to say, when I went to the Ares tour, I was sardined in with everybody else, but that has to be an interesting part of the business, you know, having some scheduling conflicts or booking an artist before they blow up. I would imagine that that has happened multiple times. It, it has. It's happened, it's happened in our facility, and, you know, another great event that we were able to get was the Eagles when Glenn Thrack yeah. Glenn Fry was still alive. He uh, he requested to play Toledo because he was from Detroit, and right. it's, it's it's interesting how some of these things happen. Um, you build relationships with promoters and you build relationships with agents, but you don't necessarily get to talk to the artists. Right. And being able to do that event was awesome. And then Bob Seeger is the is the cream of the crop for me. I'm I'm actually good friends with his manager. He's been his manager for over forty five years. Oh wow! And um, he lives in Michigan. He loves to fish. We we get together and he, he loves to golf. And, you know, Bob loved Toledo because when he first came up back in the late 60s and early 70s, he was playing backyard parties for people. Right. And now he's, you know, he's a legendary superstar and yeah. probably he'll never tour again. <laughs> We're crossing our fingers. Maybe he will, but I yeah. don't think it'll happen. <laughs> And uh, it, it's just, it's just, it's fun in this business to be able to be able to interact with those type of people. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, being embedded right in downtown, there's a lot of businesses around you to choose from. But I'm curious, is there a business that Toledo needs but does not have yet? Um, you know, I from my perspective, just because I'm in this business, is is we don't have a club here that can be from about 400 to about a thousand people, mm -hmm. and to to nurture up and coming artists. We need that space for them to tour through the, and get familiar with the market. We really have the Valentine Theater, which is a spectacular, uh, but more of a higher end, you know, plays and right. higher end type of things. The Strandian Theater is 2,400 seats, so it's too big. Right. Huntington Center is obviously too big. And then we've got Frankie's, which I think is about 250, mm -hmm. maybe 300. There's nothing in between. Right. It'd be nice to have some type of club opportunity so that you can bring these artists that are up and coming and nurture them so they get an opportunity yeah. to make it to the next level. Yeah, no, that's interesting. No one has said that yet. And I think that's obviously, from your perspective, a very, very interesting business to add. Um, I'm also curious because there's so much rich art and architecture down here. What is your favorite piece of local art or architecture? Well, again, I'm I'm a little bit biased. I mean, we've done a lot of public art at the Huntington Center and at the Glass City Center when we when we uh, renovated. Um, my favorite piece right now is probably the loop, the blue lupine, which is out on the in the patio by the by the Hilton, New New Hilton's hotel. Mm -hmm. um, I I just love the way it's 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 colors and the way it glows. Um, I just think it's a great uh, piece. I think that downtown Toledo has done such a great job of partnering with the Arts Commission to make these public art pieces happen. And, yeah. the, you know, it's a credit to the Lucas County Commission as well because they're really pushing public art. And I think, you know, having an art vibrant downtown and frankly some surrounding community just makes makes a lot of sense definitely and when you are in Toledo where do you feel that you are most calm <laughs> um probably in my backyard on my patio I have a I, have, I during COVID I built a, a backyard patio and did majority of the work myself because I you know when the Huntington Center and the Glass City Center shut down because we couldn't have anybody meet, right. um, I just went to work and kind of did did those type of things. So I have an outdoor TV and a cool little bar and fire oh, pit. Wow. And my wife and I like to hang out in the backyard, and when my daughters come home once in a while, they hang out with us back there. It's it's just it's just kind of a nice place. Um, I don't consider myself to be a, a famous person in Toledo. I think there's other people that think that you know Steve Miller's a cool guy. I consider myself to be a cool guy. I wouldn't say that, but I, I I'm really kind of a, on the down low kind of person. I I like to to socialize, but. I have a pretty small group of friends that I hang out with and I don't really get out and do a lot of 
social things in a big setting, if you will, unless it's a charity event. Well, I will be putting in my application to be in your small group of friends so that I can come to your backyard because that right. sounds really fun. Um, also, I'm sure you're going to say some downtown street, but I'm curious as to what is the street that you walk on or drive on most often? Yeah, it's, it's probably Jefferson and Summit because it's it's connected to the two facilities. I'm constantly walking back and forth a lot of times over the skywalk over Jefferson Avenue, so that's yeah. probably the one. No, that skywalk is such a beautiful piece of architecture, I think. I you know we've had a couple people talk about how much they love it, too, and how it's, you know, a really nice staple of the downtown Toledo community, which I love. Um, this is a more general question, and it's a little bit harder, but the best time that you've ever had in Toledo was at where? Because you were doing what? <laughs> um, wow, that's, that's a great question. Honestly, probably the best time I've ever had in Toledo was the first time, and it was actually playing Inverness. Oh, wow. um, I'm a golfer, not a very good golfer. I'm a middle-of-the-road <laughs> golfer, but I got invited about a month after I came to town to play, and it, about three months later, I went out and uh, ended up doing uh, a full 18 holes. And you know, I'm, I'm used to driving in golf carts, and you know, you're required to use caddies out in Inverness, which is so cool and so historical. Um, my oldest daughter actually caddied out there for a summer. Oh, cool. But uh, it's just, it's such a gem of a place that people don't understand that we have in Toledo. And they do such a great job when they, when you're out there, but they also do such a great job of finding events. Because I'm in the event business, finding great events with the Solheim Cup and all the amateur events they've right. done out there. And hopefully, fingers crossed, they'll get maybe a, a major event for some of the men. We'll see. Yeah, for sure. That is such a beautiful space and a beautiful course out there. I love Inverness. And I know, obviously, you've been here for years and years, and you've done a lot of events and been to a lot of places, but is there anything that you've always meant to do in Toledo but you have not done yet? You know, it, 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 that's a great question, and I can, it comes right to mind, is I've never done the walleye run. I've never been out on the river to do the walleye run. I've, I fish. I've been to Lake Erie numerous times to fish for walleye, but I've never went down the river and cast my line and did that in the walleye run in the spring. I, that's something I still need to put on my list and I do I love it. that. I was going to say, spring's coming up, so you better get going. Um, is there anything that you would change about Toledo if you could? Um, I don't know if there's anything I would change. I, I can tell you a quick story is, is when I came down here to interview this job, I brought my wife down here and we stayed in the park inn. And if you're familiar with Grand Rapids, Michigan, um, in the 90s it was kind of a ghost town and when we came to Toledo back in 2008 to interview for this job it was kind of a ghost town down here I think it's 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 such a gem that the, the 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 politicians or the commissioners and and have invested in downtown but I also think there's so much private investment that's taking place in downtown Toledo that it's really become um, a destination and yeah. now that we've done the renovation to the facilities now we have the buildings to make that work and now people can come down and do their business and have the fun at the same time yeah absolutely I we every single guest that I've had on here talks about the revitalization of Toledo and how it has just become such a blossoming community over the years and I love that about it and I mean growing up here I saw the change firsthand too which has been really cool and i always encourage my friends to come visit now because there's so much to do um and a little bit broader as well if you knew you could get away with it what would you do <laughs> if i knew i could get away with it i guess probably would be um well i, I guess i can get away with it. i was gonna say I was, i'm an umpire too I, I know I know your dad is is a is a great baseball guy. I'm a, I umpire Division One college baseball, but I've worked the Mud Hens now four times. Yeah, as an umpire at third base, it's something that I've always loved to do. Oh, that's and so I, fun! And, and have been able to do. Um, I've done it. Um, I, like I say, I did it once last year and once the year before. But I've been able to get out on the baseball field. I I love sports. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I was an above average athlete as a as a kid and as a high schooler, but I never was able to take it to the next level. Uh, which I was a little bit jealous about because I love to do it. So I've gotten involved in officiating, and you yeah. know I, I work high school basketball and high school football, but I also work Division One college baseball, and, and I absolutely love it. That's awesome. That's such a fun thing to do outside of work. I love that. And when you're in Toledo, what do you find the best view is? You know, I have to I have to say it's the heights at mm -hmm. uh, um, the the Renaissance. You know, when when we when I first got to town there, that that hotel had changed hands like three times. Right. And they came in and they invested in to, into the hotel and 
uh, when you walk there, you're you feel like, when you go up there, I should say, you feel like you're in such a big city. Right. You know, you, you see the view of the of the buildings. We don't have a lot of skyscrapers, but we have cool buildings, and you got the cool cool view of the water too. For sure. And I I think too, seeing the mural when you are driving on the highway or mm-hmm. at the heights like that is always such a great addition to the view anywhere you go. Um, and I know I'm sure because you work more in Toledo and your family's here that you probably don't have to travel that much, but when you're away from Toledo, what can't you wait to have when you get back? Uh, probably just a home cooked meal. Um, yeah. my, my wife and I have a, have a fun debate that, that I get to go out all the time and have fun and she stays home, <laughs> um, cause she's working locally, mm-hmm. but, uh, it's, it's nice to go out and have nice meals and, and get to entertain people and network with people and talk to people. But again, coming home, just having a nice home cooked meal makes, makes a big difference. I love that. Do you have a favorite home cooked meal? You know, um, my wife's Italian. Um, her maiden name is Fazio. So she's a true Italian <laughs> and, um, we make homemade pasta. Oh, wow. I love, we call capoletti, which is a, a, a pork and ground chicken based, and it's wrapped in little, they call them hat pastas, and you cook them in chicken broth. I love them. They're great. I love that. That sounds so good. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> um, obviously, other than the Huntington Center and the Glass City Center, what is a local business that we're most likely to find you at? Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm also helping out at the Stranian Theater now, so I'm out there quite, quite a bit. Um, you'll see me at various restaurants for lunches. Um, every once in a while, I, I stop on the way home, um, my way out mm-hmm. in Sylvania, to have a beverage with a friend on the way home. Once in a while, um, I, again, but I I try and stay home uh, when I can because I'm on the road a lot. Yeah, absolutely. So if Toledo had a new motto other than "You will do better in Toledo," what would it be? Oh man, uh, that's a great question. I I love the "Do Better in Toledo" motto. Um, I'm trying to think what what it, what it could be. Um, Maybe, maybe uh, you know, Toledo is uh, a new place or a new renaissance um, just because of all the things that have been changing. Yeah. I mean, we have awesome metro parks now that people don't know about. I just, I just don't think we do a very good job in Toledo of telling our story. For sure. And we're getting better at it, but I think we, we could do a better job of people understanding what it's at. I think you as a, as a young professional now, I'm, I've got two daughters. One lives in Guam and one lives in Minneapolis. She's still in, in college, but I'm trying to convince them to come back. Mm-hmm. And they're kind of thinking, well, why do I want to come back? I said, well, look at what you're missing. Right. And I think that we try we try very hard now as adults and as a, as a Toledo, and I'll call myself because I've been here 16 years, how do we convince young professionals to come back and, and stay here? For sure. I think honestly, that's the biggest bump in that is just the convincing them to come here. Because for me, I came back after college and just to be around my parents and figure out what I wanted to do. And then I re fell in love with the city and fell in love with being here and all of the activities going on here. And so I just got sucked into staying here for sure. So I think once you get over that initial hump of trying to come back, then you know, you are pretty set when you're here. So Obviously, this is a bit of a tough question, but what do you find the most underrated thing in Toledo is? You know, I, I think it honestly, I think it's the restaurant scene. I think we have a lot of restaurants and no offense to the chains. If you're listening, I, I still go there, but I, <laughs> I try and avoid chains, whether I'm in Toledo or somewhere else. I like to support local business, number one, but I like just the uniqueness of businesses. And we have so many cool restaurants in Toledo that I don't think people know about, Right. but um, they're, they're just great and, yeah. and they're not they're not cookie cutter things that happen in, in most spaces and I, I think that we could tell that story a little bit better too. Definitely, definitely. And this might also be a little bit tough, but what is the most overrated thing in Toledo? Overrated? Um, hmm I don't, I don't know. That's that's a great question. I guess I've never even thought about that. I, again, I think Toledo punches above its weight, not right. necessarily just with what we do at Huntington Center, but just in general now. I think we have um, momentum and things are changing. I don't know if there's anything that's that's really overrated per se. Maybe, maybe overrated because we have so much construction going on. It seems like since, <laughs> I've, since I've lived here, we, where there's always orange barrels there's everywhere. always <laughs> orange barrels. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a great answer. I've never had anyone say that before. Um, who are some local artists or musicians or... Um, kind of music scene spots that you would be hitting on the weekends or after work? Um, 
Well, from a musician perspective, you know, we used to book the, the concert series. We used to help Prometica promote the concert series, and we booked the majority of the national acts, and we worked with them on some of the local stuff. There's so many cool local bands mm -hmm. now that are in Toledo. I, I think they come to mind are, you know, the Skittlebots and, and Distant Cousins, um, to name a few that are there. Um, I just think we have a really cool music scene. Um, I'm not a big go and get blown out, blown out uh, listening to music, but I like to go to the beer stube and listen to music. I think it's it's funny now that I'm older that you know the beer stube does it the opposite way. They they do from six to ten on Fridays is when the older crowd's there, and then they turn it over and all the young people come in and we all leave. And I, I, <laughs> right. I think I think it works out so I can go home and go to bed, right? Yeah, it's a great business model, I think, <laughs> yeah. and it's fun for everybody. Um, where do you go in Toledo when you need to find inspiration? Uh, well, I go go to my back patio. I, yes. I, I, I love I love hang, I love hanging out there. Um, you know, and just and just talking to to people. There's there's a, there's a handful of people in um, Toledo that I've gotten to know when I first got to town that have stayed in touch with and become mentors for me and have become trusted advisors that can help me out. So um, I would probably depending on what the situation was or what I needed to do, I would probably make that phone call and see if I could have a conversation with them. For sure. And then what is something about Toledo that you'll always brag about? Well, I got to brag about the Huntington Center just of because course. of what, the, what they do. I, I, get, I, I, think, I think the bragging about of Toledo is the fact that we're a big city with a small town feel. Definitely. You can get anywhere in pretty much 15, 20 minutes tops. You go to sit in L.A., you may take you two hours to go 20 miles. Mm -hmm. um, we have so many advantages of being able to circulate the city being able to do things in the city. You know, the Metro Park thing I talked about before, you have such great opportunities to be able to just go for a walk or a bike ride or go hang out and just, you know, sit down, put a blanket down and lay in, lay in, the, in the grass. I mean, there's there's so many things in Toledo and, and the fact that we get four seasons. I know there's a lot of, of my friends that have moved south mm -hmm. and they enjoy it. And again, I love to visit, but I just don't know if I could be in Florida in the middle of, you know, the summertime when it's 96 and 95 yeah. 95 percent humidity and you're sweating when you walk out the door i just i love the fact that we have seasons do i love it when it's minus 12 here no but <laughs> it only happens once in a while right right <laughs> something we got to stick out to get to the other good spots i right. understand <laughs> and then finally i'm curious who the toledo win is that you most admire oh man um probably Probably the person that I most admire that's now retired is, was, was Randy Ustra. I think he did a lot of great things for the community, did a lot of community development stuff. I think he took some criticism because of them being a hospital system. And I think, you know, now because the economy changes, they've kind of had to get back to that core group of what they're doing. But I just think he's done so many good things for this community. I think that he um, really kind of changed the, the, the layout of downtown. If, if they wouldn't have invested in the steam plant, would all of this momentum of downtown even happen? Maybe, but I'm not sure it would have. Yeah, definitely. No, that's an excellent answer. And otherwise, if you have anything about the Huntington Center or the Glass City Center that you want to tell our listeners about, you can go ahead. Well, I just from a Huntington Center perspective, obviously, if you haven't been here, you're missing out. It's sure. you know, it's an eight eight thousand seat building. You know, the Toledo Walleye sell tickets like crazy here. It's it's a great atmosphere to come watch. Again, we punch above our weight. There's tons of concerts. Get on the website, check it out, and come see it. You know, the Glass City Center now has done a sixty five million dollar renovation. Uh, it's a beautiful, brand new space. We got a you know a beautiful ballroom now that we can do a, a meal for a thousand people at a time. Wow. Um, in that space, got great views of Fifth Third Field with that balcony over there. Uh, we just we just have a great asset are great assets down here that kind of are the focal point of downtown but helps us spread the economic development good news that we're going to keep hopefully hearing as the years to come yeah definitely well thank you so much for talking to us and giving us some of your toledo gems we so appreciate it absolutely it was great thank you for listening to the toledo according to podcast make sure to check out toledo city paper in print and online as well as all of the publications under adam street publishing including mature living toledo area parent ann arbor family current and finley living find us on social media or connect with us if you have any story ideas to share